Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to design and analyze a refrigeration system, uh, which is also the same as designing or analyzing an AC system or a chiller system. As all of these are pretty much the same thing, they're just a slightly different scale of size. But also remember that these, this is going to be for an ideal vapor compression cycle. So the performance of this would be slightly different to the real world scenario. So this is the theoretical version of it. Now, if you, you're a new viewer to the channel, then I'd highly recommend you check out our other videos as we cover everything to do with HVAC and buildings. Some of the ones you'll probably be interested in are the basics of the refrigeration cycle and also the chiller basics, how they work, as well as fundamentals of HVAC. So if you haven't checked those videos out, I highly recommend you go and do so. Anyway, straight into the video. So here we've got our basic refrigeration cycle. You probably know what all these components are by now, but uh, I'll just label them up. So we've got the compressor, uh, then the condenser, the expansion valve, and also the evaporator. The compressor compresses the refrigerant and pushes that around the system. The condenser rejects the heat, the unwanted heat from the system. The expansion valve expands the refrigerant and the evaporator absorbs the unwanted heat that's coming in from the building. It also produces the cooling which goes out to the building. Now to design and analyze a refrigeration system or cycle, then we want to know what the thermodynamic properties of the refrigerant is going to be at four key components, being point one here, or stage one between the evaporator and the compressor, then stage two, which is the uh, what state is it in when it leaves the compressor. State three is going to be what the state is of the refrigerant when it leaves the condenser before it enters into the expansion valve. And state four is going to be the st condition of the refrigerant just after the expansion valve before it enters into the evaporator. So the four main things we, go we want to know about the refrigerant is going to be its temperature, its entropy, its pressure, and its enthalpy at all four of these points. Now, if you haven't seen these charts before, then this is the saturation line, this gray line here. So anything to the left of this is where the refrigerant is a liquid. Any, uh, any point where it's in between this is where it's gonna be uh, some kind of vapor liquid mixture. And anything to the right hand side of that is where it's gonna be a superheated vapor. So if the line is touching on here, then that's going to be a saturated liquid. And if it's on this line here, that's gonna be a saturated vapor. So from these graphs, we can see that uh, point one here is going to be a low temperature. It's also going to be a low pressure and it's going to be uh, a saturated vapor. So we'll start to plot these as we go around. State two, we can see that it's gonna be a much higher pressure. So it's gonna be a high pressure there. It's also a high temperature and it's in the superheated region, so it's a superheated vapor. Now at point three over here, we can see that it's still a high pressure. It has reduced slightly in temperature, so it's a medium temperature, and it is also on the saturated, saturated liquid line, so it's gonna be a saturated liquid. And we can also see that point four, just after the expansion valve, when that refrigerant has all been expanded, uh, we can see that that's gonna be a, a much lower pressure and temperature, so it's a low pressure, low temperature, and it's in between the dome, so it's gonna be a liquid vapor mixture. Now, just to clarify what uh, some of these acronyms are as I've put them around, so T is gonna be for temperature, P is gonna be for pressure, H is gonna be for enthalpy, S is gonna be for entropy, and X will be the quality of the refrigerant. So uh, you can see there I've put it's a zero if it's a liquid and a one if it's a vapor. So that is just to work out how far between being a liquid and a vapor, the refrigerant is when it's in the dome there. And we'll see why that's important shortly. But you can see, for example, um, just here, X equals one. So that lets you know that it is a saturated vapor. It's right on the line uh, there. Now there's lots of ways that you can start to design one of these systems. Probably uh, knowing the cooling load that you want to achieve would be a very good point to start with. So how much uh, cooling capacity does your evaporator need? But in this video, we're just gonna start from scratch. And really all you need to do is uh, watch this video, learn uh, how we calculate things and how we look th the properties up. And then you can tweak these to your own version to design the system that you need. 
So we're going to start with the compressor. So I've got a compressor that's able to provide or push seven kilograms a second of refrigerant around the system. I've just added the M dot over here as the acronym so you know what that is. But M dot just means the mass flow rate. And the dot represents the rate. Now from the manufacturer's data, uh, this chiller is able to produce uh, 1,200 kPa of pressure. And it also needs a suction pressure of 320 kPa. So we just add those values in there. And now we'll start to fill in some of the, the data that's missing here. So we know that the pressure is 320 kPa and that it is a saturated vapor on the, on the saturation line. And then we just need to look up what the values of these are going to be on the thermodynamic uh, properties of refrigerant R134A or whichever refrigerant you're using. In fact, I'll just add that in there so we know which refrigerant we're using. So if you check out our website, theengineeringmindset.com, and specifically if you go to this page here, thermodynamic properties of refrigerant R134A, and uh, we then scroll down and we'll see, we want to find, this is the saturated refrigerant tables. So we want to find 320 kPa, which is this line here. And we want to know what the temperature, enthalpy, and entropy are at this point. So on this line here, let's change that a little bit. Uh, we can scroll to the top and see that this column is the temperature, this is the enthalpy, and this is the entropy. And obviously we're on the saturated vapor line. So uh, we've got the saturated vapor, that one, and saturated uh, vapor line for the enthalpy as well. So we're going to want this column, this column, and this column. So we want this value here, this value here, and this value here. So let's just zoom out and copy that over. So we'll take this cell here, and we'll just paste that into Excel. You don't have to do this, you could write it by hand as well. I'm just using Excel, it's a bit easier and quicker. Then we'll take the enthalpy at the saturation, saturated level, and just paste that in as well. Then we just take the temperature and we paste that one in as well. And I'll just update that front sheet there. And now we'll have a look to find what the properties of the refrigerant are at state two. Now to look at the uh, properties of the refrigerant up on the tables, we need to know two points uh, to reference that. So at the moment we just know what the pressure is and then we know it's a superheated vapor. But because we're doing this as an ideal cycle, that means it's the compressor is isentropic, and that means that the entropy at state two equals that at state one. So I'll just drop that figure in there that's come from here. And now we can look in the superheated vapor tables uh, to find the uh, enthalpy and the temperature given the pressure and the entropy. So if we come back to the website and we scroll down through the properties of the Fridrin R134A, and you'll see we'll come to the superheated refrigerant. So we're looking for 1,200 kPa. So these are too low. We'll come down a bit more, a bit more. We've got one for all of them over here. There we go, 1,200 kPa. Now the entropy we're looking for is 0 0.9301 kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin. But looking down this list, you can see it's not quite there. It's actually in between these two here. But that's okay, we'll just have to use some linear interpolation to uh, find that value. So if we highlight and then copy and paste uh, these values here, and just drop them in Excel, and uh, we'll just drop the values in there. Now we can use this formula here to calculate what that's going to be. So we know these three uh, uh, A's, and we also know the uh, B1 and B3, but we don't know B2. And what I mean by that is we know uh, at 50 degrees what the entropy is going to be and at 60 degrees what the entropy is going to be. But we want to know what the enthalpy and entropy is going to be at 0 0.9301. So therefore these will be our A's and these will be our B's. Now I've already pre-made the calculator for this. Um, so I'll just show you the formula there. It's just this formula 
here, but in the Excel version. Uh, so we'll just drop the numbers in there. So we'll take the 50 degrees Celsius, drop that in there, uh, six degrees onto here, and then we'll take these three uh, numbers there and we'll drop them in and that will give us the temperature there which is now 50.9 degrees celsius so i'll add that to the table and then we can find out what the enthalpy is by doing exactly the same just moving uh, this enthalpy over and this enthalpy over using that same formula and that will give us what the enthalpy is at the correct entropy that we need so we'll just copy and paste that over into our table Obviously, we know that the entropy was the same as this cell here. And we'll just update the overall table there. Now, as this is an ideal system, there is no uh, resistance in there, so there'll be no pressure drop. In the real world, obviously, there will be some uh, pressure drop. But for this uh, ideal scenario, then we're just going to take the pressure from here, and we'll assume that is the pressure at state 3. So now we've got the pressure, and we know that it is a saturated liquid and that means we can use the saturated liquid tables to find out the temperature enthalpy and entropy so coming back to the site and the properties tables uh, we'll just scroll down we've got the saturated refrigerant tables there and we're looking for 1200 kpa there's the pressure on this line here and we know that it's a saturated liquid so we want the saturated liquid column so the entropy we want this one here the enthalpy we want this column here and obviously we've got the temperature over there so we just scroll down and uh, so we want this value here and this value here as well as this temperature here so we'll just copy and paste those into the excel sheet so there you go we just drop these in there and we also know that this pressure is going to be the same as p2 and i'll also just update the front sheet there and now we need to know what the properties of the refrigerant are going to be at state 4. And this is slightly more tricky because obviously it's in between the vapor dome. So it's part liquid, part vapor. And we're not sure exactly yet uh, how much vapor or liquid it is. But that's okay because we can just work it out. So we know here that the temperature is going to be the same as 0.1. And that the enthalpy will remain constant through the expansion valve. So that means we can use the enthalpy from state three. So if we drop those figures in there and also drop them into our Excel sheet at state four. Now we also know what the pressure is because that is going to be equal to state one. And that means we only need to find out what the entropy is. And the way we do that first is by finding the quality of the refrigerant. So how much uh, or what part uh, liquid or vapor do we have? And for that, we come back to the saturated refrigerant tables and we scroll down until we find the 320 kPa line. And then we want to copy and paste all these values or just the entropy, enthalpy, uh, temperature and pressure. And we want to take those for both the saturated uh, liquid and vapors. And now to find the quality of the refrigerant, we're going to use this formula here. So X being the quality and H representing the enthalpy. So we already have the value of H4 because that was eight equal to the enthalpy at point or state three. And we also know what HF and HG are because we've got them here on the table. So HF is the saturated liquid and HG is the saturated vapor value. And we took these from the uh, charts on the website. So now uh, we'll just use this formula here, but I've put them into this cell here. You can see the formula up here. Um, it's exactly the same as this one here. And when you drop these numbers out, you'll see that this comes out as a decimal because it's a ratio. And so it's uh, 31, almost 32%. So now we use that uh, quality that we've just calculated there to work out what the entropy is going to be at state four. And we do that using this formula here. So we've just worked out what the quality is at state four. Um, we know what uh, SF and SG are going to be because we've taken them also from the tables. And uh, we can see SF is the saturated liquid and SG is the saturated vapor uh, for entropy, sorry. 
So if we uh, use this formula here, just this one here, exactly the same there, just uh, in the Excel version, and we'll see that S4 drops out at 0.4436 uh, kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. So that's all the uh, properties of the refrigerant worked out, but we've still got some more calculations to do. So let's work out the amount of work done by the compressor. So we can do that using this formula here. Um, so we've got the enthalpy of state two and state one and the mass flow rate of the refrigerant. So how much refrigerant is the compressor pushing around? And uh, we can use this formula up here, which is using these cells to uh, work out it's the compressor is doing 82.29 kilowatts of work on the system. And we can also work out how much cooling or the, the cooling load on the evaporator by using this formula here. And uh, it's almost exactly the same uh, formula. We're just using the enthalpy from point one and the enthalpy from point three. And uh, we use this formula here to work out that it is providing 402 kilowatts of cooling. And we also want to know or calculate what is the heat rejection by the condenser. And we can work that out using this formula here. Again, very simple and similar formula. Uh, and just using this formula here. And that we can see it's 480, 485 kilowatts. Now you notice that that is higher than the cooling provided. And that's because we've got to get rid of the heat uh, produced by the compressor as well. So you can add these together to, uh, to check if your figures are correct. So if you added the, evap uh, the cooling load plus the work done by the compressor, you should equal the heat rejected by the condenser. If they don't equal, then you've done something wrong and you need to go back and just have a look through some of your figures. And then we can calculate the efficiency of the system or the coefficient of performance using this formula here, which is just the cooling load divided by the work done by the compressor. And we can use this formula here, very simple, just the division, the ratio. Uh, and that will work out that this system we've just looked at here is producing uh, or has a coefficient of performance of 4.89. So for every kilowatt of electricity you put in, you'll get 4.89 kilowatts of cooling. And that's a very efficient system. Now, if you want to know what the temperature of the air coming off the coil, so the air on the, uh, in this case, the evaporator and the condenser are both fan based. So if you want to know what the temperature of the air coming off of this is going to be, then you can have a look at this video here, which is the HVAC cooling coil plus calculations video. And in there, you will see that we've already done the formula for that for cooling core outlet air temperature. And that's the temperature of the air coming out. Uh, there's a couple of bits you need to know, such as the temperature of the air going in, et cetera, et cetera. Have a look at that video. I think it will really help you. And uh, I'll also add a link at the top here so you can see that too. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped you. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to check out our website, theengineeringmindset.com. Once again, thanks for watching.